everybody and welcome back to Smith Party of Six. I'm Adriana Smith and it is awesome to have you guys here. Um, today I'm going to be going back into our stay at home mom series, what I wish I had known before becoming a stay at home mom. This is video number six. They don't go in any particular order. So if this is the first one that you're watching, that's okay. You can catch the others in a minute. So jumping right in, the sixth thing that I wish I knew before becoming a stay at home mom is that you have to be self motivated. And what I mean by that is that being a stay at home mom can be a little thinkless sometimes. And so you have to find your own motivation instead of outward praise to be able to get the job done. So before I became a stay at home mom, I guess I really didn't like think about it all that much. With a normal job, obviously you have somebody telling you what to do and that's your job, so you've gotta do it. But you know, when you're a stay at home mom, the only thing driving you is you. I can choose to sit in my jammies all day and get nothing done if I really wanted to. Um, of course, that would mean that nobody would have their clothes and the dishes would be gross and disgusting in the sink and nobody would get fed. But I mean, I could technically choose to do that. There's nobody who's going to come after me if I don't do my job as a stay at home mom. And you know, it can be kind of tempting to like just want to stay in your jammies all day long, um, especially because like I kind of mentioned already, it can be really thankless. Things we do don't always really get noticed, but if we didn't do those things, then people would definitely notice that they didn't get done. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that we should go on strike to prove a point either and to try to show how much that we're actually doing, even though that could be tempting too sometimes. I'm gonna tell my husband for a minute. He's not like this anymore. He's seriously like the sweetest guy in the world, the best husband, and I love him to bits. And that's why I can tell a story about him right now. Um, because when we first got married, uh, well, I guess it was a little after we first got married, but when I first became a stay-at-home mom, it was early on in our marriage. Um, and we had just had our daughter Arwen. He would get home from work after, you know, all day long of just like being exhausted, breastfeeding constantly, which is like a full-time job in and of itself, and actually doing things around the house and feeling like, you know, I got a lot done. And he would walk in <laughs> And he would kind of try to like tiptoe into it because he knew that it could potentially upset me. And he would be like, so what'd you do today? <laughs> and it was definitely one of those things where you could tell like he didn't really see a difference in the house. And in my mind, it's like, are you kidding me? Like I, I vacuumed the floors. Oh, you have clean underwear? It's not the underwear fairy. I did the laundry. Oh, at least half the dishes got done. Sometimes it was hard to get all of them done. Uh, yeah, that was definitely me. Nobody came in and did our dishes for me. So yeah, the things that we do definitely don't always get the credit that we may feel like in the moment that they deserve. And during that time, it was actually really hard for me. Like I'm smiling and laughing about it now, but it was actually like really, really difficult. And we're about to go to church here for just a minute, but I really just prayed for God to change my husband's heart and for him to see the things that I did differently and to see me differently. And if that's something that you're struggling with is feeling like your husband doesn't notice the things that you do, I mean, number one, there might need to be a change in your own heart, which we will get to in just a moment. But also number two, pray for a change in his too. I used to be like really conflicted about like the whole free will thing and then like, okay, so if we have free will, then how is God gonna change this person's heart? But God has shown up time and time again when I have prayed for something like that and a change has definitely 100% occurred in my marriage. I mean, like I said, my husband's a super sweet guy. He's always had a good heart, but he just, he didn't see the things that I did and it kind of like wounded me a little bit there in the beginning. But I've especially noticed the closer that we grew together in God, the more that he started to notice the things that I wished that he had noticed in the beginning. So part of it just may be time too. But definitely if, if you feel like your husband isn't noticing the things that you're doing and it's kind of like hurting you and he's kind of questioning like if you're really doing anything all day long, then take some time, go to God and talk about it. So when we take things to God in prayer, a couple things are going to happen. Just keep this in mind. Either one, we are going to realize that we are actually the one that needs a change of heart, which very well could be the case. 
Or we could also realize that, okay, he isn't correcting me on this thing. So maybe this is something that's okay for me to want. And then we need to just leave it at his feet and trust him with his timing. So it may take some time for you to see a heart change with your husband, but just trust God and put your faith um, in knowing that he's not going to forget about your request. He's, he still sees you. He's not going anywhere. He knows exactly the thing that you've laid at his feet and he's taking care of it. All right, so we went to church. I digress, let's get back on topic. So like we've been talking about, being a stay-at-home mom can be incredibly thankless. So we have to be motivated by something other than outward praise or people noticing or getting a thank you from our children, especially during those early years. Like. It's not gonna happen. You gotta be motivated by something else. And I'm gonna point back to our church time really quick to say that my motivation is 100% God. Um, and knowing that he sees value in what I do. In more than one scripture in the Bible, it talks about how he is preparing a place for us. And that's how I see a lot of this work of being a stay-at-home mom. Of course, I am not comparing myself to Jesus or saying that I am even close to the glory that he is. Anything that happens in this world is just a type and shadow of greater things to come. But I do think that the way that we are to feel about preparing our home for our families mirrors that which he has gone to do for us because he's gone to prepare a place for us. And I'll talk a little bit about that more in an upcoming video too, um, kind of about homemaking versus housekeeping and the difference and the, the heart attitude there. The point is that God finds what we are doing worthwhile. And in the word, Paul also instructs us women to be homemakers and to be workers in the home. And I feel like in today's society, that gets such a bad rap. It's not a bad thing, what he's saying. It's not like he's trying to like put us in our place or something. The world that we live in sees homemaking as something that's not super valuable and sometimes even like kind of degrading but it's actually beautiful and something that God actually puts value on and has given us this purpose of homemaking. And so of course, even if you're a working mom, you can still be a homemaker at the same time. That's not at all what I mean. But when you're a stay at home mom, that's more of your focus because you are home more. Sure, a lot of the day is spent doing things with your children, but you're also able to focus on tasks that need to be done at home a little bit more often than what a working mom would since she is away from the home. And I'm gonna be honest, like for a while, I had a really bad attitude about it and it's something that God has definitely been working on my heart um, about because I felt like I was making like all these sacrifices. Like even though this is what I chose to do, I still felt like I was just completely laying down my life. And in some ways we are, we are laying down our lives to focus more on our family. But I definitely wasn't seeing it in the light that I should have been seeing it in. Um, and it felt like, you know, I was just with the kids all day and having to clean the house all day and scrub the floors and do the dishes and clean butts and all this stuff while my husband got to go out and be with adults and have normal conversation. Um, and so it was just like an ugly heart thing that was happening for me. Even though I was thankful to be a stay at home mom, there were still those parts about it that I didn't like and that my flesh was kind of battling against. But if you feel like you have a bad attitude about the fact that this job is thankless and about the homemaking aspect of it, then I would definitely say to take that to God in prayer as well because he will 100% change your heart if you ask him to. And you know, when he turns your heart toward the work that you're doing and makes it something that you want to do instead of something that you're like, Ugh, I have to do this, then it's gonna change the way that you do it, which may also then in turn change your family's heart and give them a different perspective on you too. So when you're throwing yourself into something as your passion and um, you're truly putting your all in it, like it's gonna change the way that you do things. It's gonna add a little bit more finesse to it. So, you know, homemaking, it's all about creating like this cozy little nest for your family and this place for you to grow and flourish together. So whenever your heart is turned toward that work, instead of it just being a task that you have to check off your list and get done, 
then like I said, it's gonna change the way that you're doing it. And when that happens, your husband's likely gonna notice. Your kids, depending on their age, they, they probably won't yet until they start to get older. They might, they might surprise you and they might notice too. Um, but especially your husband, he's likely going to notice if you have a heart change with it and if you're doing things differently. But even if he doesn't, for now, just know that you're not alone, that what you do is valuable and worthwhile, and that God sees what you're doing, even if nobody else does, and let that be your motivation. And I know I'm talking right now as if you're also a Christian, and I understand that there's a possibility that somebody who's watching this isn't a Christian. So even if you don't believe in God, you need to find something that's gonna motivate you other than other people and the praises of your family, because it's likely that they're not really gonna to notice and it's not really their job to notice so you have to find that motivation inside of you to just get the job done and to still feel good about it even on those rough days all right i hope this encouraged you in your stay-at-home mom life or potentially going to become a stay-at-home mom life if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and also hit that bell notification to be notified every time i upload a new video all right thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch and i will catch y'all next time bye